here on Pollute Your Soul. We are here with Psycho Sounds in the cut. Thank you for coming on the show once again. You're here to talk. Who are you here to talk about, my friend? We're going to talk about some Stone Dog and some Six Set shit today, baby. Yeah, and and you're rocking that Water Boys merchandise. In, in oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouts out to Blunt for freeing me this. Yeah. So we're we're gonna be talking about like some very important stuff for here for the underground. We're gonna be talking about like the history of the legendary L Stoney. Stone. Yeah. Up? Let's go over like all his names first. Um, I know there's uh, L Stoney, Stone Dog, and then yeah, Stone there's Dog. um, there's Hoodoo Man. But that was like a one track deal. Uh, Lil Kilmain, uh, Babyface Ghost. Uh, shit. Obviously, El Stoney, um, DJ Serpent Eyes, Max oh, yeah. Collins, um, and what the fuck else? Oh, Calvin Mercury. Those are all the ones I know. Calvin Mercury is really good. Yeah, that's like where a lot of his boom bap stuff was. Yeah, that's his like early stuff, for sure. It's like before he went, got really uh, dark. So how did you get into the legendary Stone Dog, first off? So, I got into him around the Calvin Mercury era, because, you know, I'm, like, old as shit. But um, I found Calvin Mercury on um, YouTube. Um, he only has, like, one video out. But I just... And at the time, I knew he was just some random dude from uh, Southern California. Um, and I didn't really make the connection that he was Stone Dog a couple years later. Um, because, like, he, I don't know, I kind of lost track of it. But then he had a track with Ramirez that came out. I think it was like Space Funk '93, and that's oh, when yeah. he used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when he used his Babyface Ghost alias, and I heard that shit, and that shit was hard. Um, and then he started dropping like some projects, like um, God, what the fuck is it? Critical Times, you know, the Victor Lopez EP, 1994 EP. Um, and then, you know, you see him on some of the six set stuff, some of the, uh, I would say, I think like the first Doom Shop album, he had a couple of tracks on there. Um, but yeah, and I've been listening to him ever since, you know, even after I think it was like 2018, 2019, when they just took all, he took all his shit off Bandcamp, deleted his SoundCloud, all his social media. I think he has a Bandcamp again, but he's just like gone. <laughs> What what is it important for someone to like understand about Stone Dog? Like what type of music? Um, what can you expect when you like listen to his music? So, y y one thing that makes him a great artist is you're not going to expect one thing. He makes everything, um, like you know, from the G Funk stuff, which I think is probably what he's most known for. Uh, obviously, like, the Memphis-influenced stuff, because, you know, the Doom Shop, Six Set Wave. Um, and then, obviously, you know, Boom Bap. And, you know, sometimes he also does things like, you know, he has uh, some tracks with, like, Jake. Uh, Jake and um, some of the, they're, like, really weird, distorted beats, and it's it's so sick. Jake's an um, amazing producer, like, his, like, especially on the... Um uh huh. Miss Understood. Miss Un like with um Play of Misery. Like he like, he's always doing some crazy yeah. shit. Um, yeah. Jake is like, like his beats are just very like out out of in a different world. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, most definitely. And then you know Stone Dog is also a producer too. Like you know he has a two producer aliases DJ Serpent Eyes, which is probably the more popular one. And then, you know, Max Coffins, which is more of an unknown one, but he produces a lot of, like, it's kind of almost like vapor wavy type shit. Mm. Um, and, you know, the DJ Serpent Eyes, it's kind of like vapor waves, smooth, mixed with a little G-Funk. Um, so, yeah, he does everything. And I think I even heard, like, a track with, like, it, it was almost like metal-esque, but I forgot the name of the fucking track and you know, that's gonna piss me off because mm. it, it was like a lucy but i forgot the name of it um when i find it i'll send you the link you're gonna be like but, taking a shit and you're gonna like remember it you're like ah, <laughs> ah. yeah 
Yeah, that's usually how I am because I feel like fucking ADHD, so I'm all over the place. But yeah, yeah just expect the unexpected because he makes almost everything. Yeah, and speaking on like mental influence stuff, I say that like um, the song Alize is very kind of like even though it's obviously like dark occult, like I mean it's produced by Cole, but it's like dark atmospheric folk you know what I mean? whatever you want to call it it's very black metal it does sound like crazy as mm-hmm. fuck the distortion on the vocals a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of people like that's like a good like historic like track like for, mm-hmm. for him is alizé like, definitely and, yeah. and occult's an amazing producer too we should do it oh, we should do an episode on occult sometime oh yeah most definitely that yeah, guy is it a cold Ray Cog or are they two different people? So they're two different people. Ray Cog is like some dude from the Netherlands, um, and then a cult's from Canada. Okay, yeah, they're just always like making shit together. So like, I, I was like, I don't know, I assumed. Yeah, yeah, low key, I thought they were like the same thing. Um, because I know uh, Ray Cog is one of the newest members of Six Set. Um, I think he came after Jake left. But, um, yeah, I thought they were the same person for a little bit. But then, you know, I'd say he's from the Netherlands. So I thought it was DJ Unfair, but DJ Unfair is the other dude from the Netherlands. So I, I just realized he was his own dude. Who else is there? In, in, isn't there, like, another guy in Six Ed that's, like, DJ something? Like, like there's, like, another one. Um, so... Are you talking about currently or just like overall? I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, D- Doom Shop. There's like a DJ Fat Jun. Yeah, that's his name. D- DJ Fat Jun. Yeah, DJ Fat Jun's hard. Um, he's he's kind of like um, he was gone for a little bit, but he's been like posting some new stuff recently, and it's pretty fire. Like he did a West Side Gun, um, a West Side Gun remix. Um, oh, yeah. Shit's hard. It's on his SoundCloud. Um, but yeah, he's a legend too. He produced a couple of Stony tracks that I really fuck with. Now I have an important question for for Stone Dog Lord. It, has there ever been a Stone Dog performance? Yes, there there has been. Um, it was like really early on. Um, I think it was like 2017, 2018. It was like a it was a Doom Shop thing, and you know I'm um. I'm friends with uh, Demetis on Facebook. Um, I'm friends with a lot of those dudes on Facebook, but obviously without like revealing who I am, because like that I was on Facebook before Instagram and shit. But you know, Demetis was like posting videos with Stony on his Facebook without the mask, um, and you know, I think it was I forgot the name of the exact show, but he has performed live. It's really rare though. Yeah, that's why I was asking. I bet, I bet anybody that has footage of that it's like that's some rare like type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like for oh like, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. You know, like um, a lot of those like earlier like um, underground shows. Like if you lingered around, you probably met someone that like became famous. That's what like Slim Gorilla was telling me. He's like he met Ramirez at like a, a, a show. Like a, a show was done six set in like twenty thirteen. He didn't even really yeah. know who he was. He just like he just kind of knew him like a little bit. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. And then like you know years later, it's like you know what I mean. He's Ramirez. You know what I mean? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, I've only been to one Doom Shop show. Um, it was a, a Judgment Day too, at, or Judgment Day in L.A. Oh, um, you were there, the one with like all of them in the. The the, pack, the little packed room type shit. Yeah, I was in there for a little bit, but I kind of regretted it because I have social anxiety like a motherfucker, and it was so small in there, and it was hot. I, it, I it was stinky too. All yeah, the motherfuckers, but, yeah, just a bunch of like stinky mouth breathing dudes. <laughs> yeah. So I I wasn't that wasn't really my scene. <laughs> I just fucking listened to the music. Yeah. But that's that's like a legendary moment though. Like like I always look back at that performance every now and then just 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 to look at it and be like, man, I wish I was there. You know. Yeah, yeah. I guess like that's the one benefit of me getting older. I've seen shit. 
I guess, that's like the only thing I can think of for real, though. Yeah. So, another thing we should like kind of talk about is like the history of like, do you know like has there ever been like an interview like where he talks about like how did he get into music like what what his stance on his music is, and like kind of like his his life like what could you say you know about him to the fullest not not some crazy personal shit like you know just like in general like about stone dog yeah so like there's no actual stone dog interview a lot of the stuff i learned from like dming people that were kind of close to him um and i i like i bought stuff off his band camp um like albums digital albums off his band camp um, but I can't find those download links anymore. But um, so basically, I know, you know, Stone Dog started Sick Records, which a lot of people don't really know unless you were there around that time. But he is the founder of Sick Records, uh, not, not Kevin the Creep. Uh, <laughs> I still want him to unblock me, but, you know, it is what it is. But he started Sick Records. And then I think, you know, it was like him, uh, Tyrus White. They didn't really fuck with Kevin like that. I think Stoney just like left altogether, and Kevin basically just took over. Um, but yeah, he started Sick Records, um, and then he was obviously a part of Doom Shop too. Um, I don't remember like when exactly he stopped releasing music. Um, I think it was like 2018, 2017. Um, but yeah then he just like went off the grid to the point where you know i remember i was on an mc holocaust live and i asked him like if you knew where stoney was and he said no i don't know where he is but i hope he's okay um but i had somebody tell me you know he's he's a little older like i think late 30s mid 30s um and he has like a family and shit so i think he's kind of just living life um, I think he's living in, like, Louisiana right now, uh, like, kind of outside New Orleans, like, south of New Orleans, um, and, you know, I mean, that's what it shows on his band camp, um, and I think he posted a message in, like, August of 2022, I think, and he was, like, talking about making a comeback, but he's dealing with his health issues and family stuff. And I still haven't heard anything since then. So, <laughs> yeah, who knows? It'll be legendary but, comeback for for real. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, I get it. You know, not wanting to be in the spotlight, even if it's like an underground spotlight. Um, having a, a lot of attention on you is sometimes kind of hard. Um, but yeah, that's like the most I really do know of what happened to him. I'm pretty sure he's living in Louisiana right now. Um, but, um, yeah, the evolution was pretty crazy from, like, Calvin Mercury to, to pre I guess, present day. Yeah. Because Calvin Mercury was, like, it, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't that great. It was, like, it was like pretty run-of-the-mill boom back. Yeah a little bit of like west coast style shit but you know as he like got into doom shop he started getting darker and he started you know going from like g-funk to memphis and it is sick um but yeah he's the goat <laughs> he's the goat <laughs> yeah bro like, like and, and like he's got a lot of wide range of shit like paulie shore don't sound like anything like his shit mm -hmm. with like the madness, you know what I mean? Like, he's always got some like different shit from the next. I love Paulie Shore, it's one of my favorite songs, but for sure. Yeah, facts. Facts. That is a good one. Um, my favorite Stony tracks. Um, I really like Robin the Local Liquor Store. Um that's produced by DJ Fat Junk. Um sure, I yeah. also like um Black Prince of Hell's Air. To me that's like his best song. Um I like uh fuck. House Party for Dead N Words. That's a that's a heater. Um, and uh, what the fuck else? Uh, Southwest Players with Dreddy Franks. Um, I'm trying to think. Pigs in a Blanket. Uh, Money by the Ton with Dom. Uh, uh, probably Little Shop of Doom. 
Night. <laughs> Little shop of doom. Yeah, yeah. And that's also produced by Fat John. And uh, 5.0, I fuck with too. And then he has a song with Dragon Man called Fresh Out the Crazy House. And finally, he has like one track is this alias. Is It was like Hoodoo Man. And it's called In the Field. It's so sick. Um, but it samples um, One Life to Live by Skinny Pimp. It was like Juicy J's verse. Shit's so hard. I think I posted it on my IG. Um, but that's, that's low-key my favorite one uh, in the field. But that's like the most unknown one, I feel. Yeah. So you have a very... I mean, we, we think that your MC Holocaust tapes are rare. You have probably some of the rarest tapes in, in this shit's is those Stone Dog tapes. Do you want to share those tapes? Do you yeah. will never sell these. Like, I know for a fact, they like, don't even need to ask. You will never sell these. Like, everybody, these are not for sale. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. No. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I know, I, I'm pretty sure I have all the known physical releases of from Stone Dog. Um, so, this one is, like, his most recent re- Oh, my God, it's, like, not focusing, but... Um, this is his most recent release. Um, it was kind of like a release through Doom Shop. It's just like an updated version on his greatest hits. It's pretty cool. It's got the red label. Um, but it's kind of the same as his, you know, first greatest hits album. Um, it just, I think it has a couple extra tracks on there, like Doom Fellows with Baker. Um, there's a couple other ones. Um, I was thinking about ripping it, but I think there's some rips online. Um, and then, you know, this, I think, is his first release ever. I got this from uh, Mac Frost. Shout out to him. Um, this was released from uh, For the Slab. Uh, this is just him on this tape. Um, it's some of his really early stuff. Um, I think there's only, like, 50 of those shits made. Um and then this is like the the second variation on his greatest hits one and it has a uh, dom's greatest hits tracks on the other side um Ooh, that's, but, that's cool it has dom's on the other side yeah yeah that one that one is pretty hard to find but this one uh kill them all for the stone stuff you're not gonna see many of these i don't think you i don't think anybody's ever gonna sell them um you know, most people didn't even think this fucking existed. Um, but you can buy these off Stoney's Bandcamp um, back in the day. To me, like, this is probably the most complete Stoney project. Like he, like I said, he had a couple EPs, uh, like the Victor Lopez EP and the 1994 EP. Um, I think he had a couple other ones. Yeah. Um, but... Um, Kill Em All for the Stones is his most uh, complete. Um, it's got, like, the flow on there. Um, it's got, um, what else? 40 Ounce Bounce with Holocaust. Um, i trying to think what else. I think I have a rip of it somewhere. Um, there's, like, um, 24, 365, 24, 7, 365. Um, Paranoid Void, which is pretty good. Charm Sticks. Um, and then um, he's got... Um, God, what the fuck else is in there? Uh, those are the ones that I can think of off for it. But to me, that's his best project. His most complete project. That's some rare shit, bro. That's, that's yeah. like, honestly... That's some, like, yeah. never will be seen. You gotta, that's gonna be in a museum someday. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm trying to see if I got the EP name right. Okay, yeah, Tape 1994. Um, that's what it was. Um, it, that's just, like, one of his EPs. You can find it on SoundCloud and shit. Um, you can't find Kilomar for the Stone Stone on SoundCloud, but there is a full version on YouTube. Um, so I recommend looking it up. It's, a, it's so good. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely going to post some of my some more of my stone dog stuff once i hit 1k on instagram um i'm gonna post like probably some of my rare stuff um just because i think i want more people to see it 
if that makes sense. That's why I reposted one of my older posts with more audio. Um, just because, you know, trying to share this with the world. The it's Nemesis not... at Large one, right? Yep, yep. I posted that original one. That was when I lived in South Carolina for grad school. I posted that. Um, I mean, like, I'm not somebody who really cares about, you know, likes and all that stuff, but um, I found out how to do, like, screen recording because I have an Android, so I was able to get more audio for the uh, Nemesis at Large tape, so I wanted to repost it with more audio. That That's mainly why. Um because it wasn't even the track I liked. I just found some shit on YouTube and downloaded it through some like app where I could illegally download YouTube videos. But the quality was garbage. It, it was like grainy as shit. But um, I just started using the screen record thing. And I was able to get more audio for it. But yeah, once I hit 1K, I'm probably going to post that Stone Dog tape. For yeah, sure. It's gonna be, I'm excited to some more high quality images of that. Cause the zoom, the zoom is not friendly to our non-high quality cameras that we already have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But um, yeah. this was a le- definitely a legendary uh, episode. Where this is like for like, I, there's got to be some like I'm gonna definitely try and post this on like the Doom Shop Reddit or like if there's a Stern Dog Reddit. I don't think there is, but there should be. Um, I think there is a post on Reddit that has a greatest hits um link and all that so i'll definitely post it there but i think that the stone dog fan base needs to see this episode and hear this episode and um yeah yeah. you'll find out that sick records was found out was uh founded by a stone dog and and uh that's another thing though is like was tyler was tyrus white in sick records yes he was one of the earlier members like Sick Records used to be pretty, um, it used to have a lot of dudes, um, obviously it had, like, DMT Demons, so Chaos and Dizzy, um, Stone Dog, uh, Tyrus White, Dumb. Mr. Frost was in it, well, he's Mac Frost now, but Mr. Frost, um, shit, who else? There were, there were a couple dudes, but, um, they used to have a lot more dudes in there, like, I have the first two SIC, uh, like uh posse albums that they ever made um but yeah uh now sick records is kind of i mean you know i like mac john he's cool but that's about it for me because i know i fuck with like domsta uh or dom and obviously mf chaos but i think they're kind of doing their own thing right now and i respect them for it shout out to dom cool dude mf chaos uh, is fire too yeah, he is, for sure. Um, his new shit is kind of cool, and he's, like, making stuff with HP Shouty again, which is cool. Um, and, you know, that w- that wasn't a thing for a while, because, surprise, you know, HP Shouty left SIC Records, and I think he got kind of alienated, but it's dope seeing them working together again. Yeah, facts. Um... What what other facts could you say about Stone Dog before you read this up? Any, any specific like favorite albums? Well, you already kind of talked about all that, but like yeah, yeah. So the to, even though I really like Kill 'Em All for the Stone stuff, I really recommend listening to the Victor Lopez EP. That EP is so fire. Um, and if you haven't listened to it, please listen to Black Prince of Hell there. Um, and if you want to hear some other dope Stone Dog tracks, um, you can look at, uh, Doom Shop Volume 1, Six Set Volume 3, and then he has a track on Doom Set Volume 1 called Puppet Master. That shit's hard, too. Yeah, Puppet Master is crazy. That one's really yeah. cool. Yeah, and also, like, his shit with Cursed, I highly recommend. Front page, especially, like, that. That's so far. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show, and um, definitely a historic moment for the Stone Dog fan base, and I really appreciate that you came on. Man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And obviously, I will link your Instagram below. You're posting a lot of, uh, you know, the pictures, blog posts about... Um, 
your physical copies and stuff like that and you also just kind of talk about like underground music in general in there and uh thank you man of course check out yeah. make sure fans check out his instagram it's got some interesting stuff if you're a fan of underground music and uh thank you man yeah of course peace